Welcome to Humber.TV. Today we have Professor Sidney Bush and he actually believes you can reverse heart disease. Sidney, how on earth can you reverse heart disease? Well, I don't, uh, don't just believe it. I know it that I can reverse heart disease. Now, uh, 200 testi written testimonials to the effect that people have seen their arterial disease reversing. And what happens in the retinal arteries happens everywhere in the body. So when you say the retinal arteries, you actually can take a photograph of the Yes. Through the eyes, yes, and and they, you feel that's actually direct correlation to actually what the, what's happening in yes, your heart. Yes, we've known since 1851 when when Helmholtz invented the ophthalmoscope, so people could see for the first time what was happening at the back of the eye in the retina. People have known about the, the connection between the retinal arteries and heart disease for, for over a hundred years. But why is it's been over a hundred years? I've, like, I've never heard of that before. I'm sure a lot of people out there haven't well, heard of it before. The ophthalmoscope was invented in 1851, and then the self-luminous ophthalmoscope about 50 years later when batteries came in and uh, electric bulbs, and they were miniaturised. And so for 100 years, people have been uh, uh, drawing pictures at that time. Uh, I have lovely photographs, uh, lovely pictures, uh, f photo, uh, colour pictures in... Um, uh, a textbook of a hundred years ago showing people's arteries as they were a hundred years ago, native boy, a European girl and so on and so forth. So it's, it's been very, very well known for a hundred years. So from the, okay, so, you, so you've found out that the, you've got this correlation between what's happening behind the arteries and the eyes to the heart, the arteries and the heart. So how on earth do you get people to well, that was them? done for The correlation was done for me by four very clever, there are three cardiologists and, and ophthalmologists, as I said on BBC uh, Radio Humberside that, um, that Mitchelson, Morganroth and friends did this correlation very, very accurately. So they found there was a 100% sensitivity correspondence and a 100% correl uh, specificity. So absolutely no room for doubt whatsoever. When you see the arteries healing and the plaque disappearing, dissolving in the, in the eye, it is happening in the heart at the same time. It cannot happen in one without the other. But it seems so, so but people when they go and get their heart checked is so intrusive and so painful. And here you're offering a, a simple, very simple, easy, I gather also very cost effective method. Why isn't it being used all the time? Well, the cardiologist Dr. Matthias Rath was the first person to say this is fraudulent, it shouldn't be happening. There are 700 new cancers every year from the x rays which are used for you know, so called uh, uh, cardiography, cardiography, angiography. Uh, it's absolutely unpardonable and inexcusable that they're trying to use x-rays to see cholesterol in impacting inside the arteries. When we have photographs, we like to see the colour of it. You can't see the colour with x-rays. It's fraudulent. It's, it's total... But I, can't, but I can't believe it. It's still happening. Why is it happening? Well, uh, money. Money. Because two pounds for the vitamin C doesn't put money in, in the pockets of, of, of the, these specialists when they'll get 2,000 or 20,000 pounds for a life save, so-called life-saving... Uh, Procedure. So the, the, so the thing is, so your big thing is that just to dissolve the plaque in the arteries of the heart is actually taking mega doses of vitamin C your body along is with other nutrients. Your body is designed, given the right nutrients, your body is designed to solve its own problem. Your heart is designed to grow and to stay healthy. We've, nobody's ever been born with the, with the deficiency of these modern drugs like the statins. The, the idea of being born with a statin deficiency is too ludicrous for words. But we are born. Everybody, everybody knows that we are born with a vitamin C deficiency. So the thing, but when you, you talk to people about vitamin C deficiency, like scurvy, people just scoff, like that's happened like when Captain Cook discovered Australia, you know, they, they, they cured that with um, limes. Like why, how on earth can this diet now that we're in, like this now, how can we on earth we be vitamin C deficient? Well, uh, you see, what happens is that as we age, we produce less of uh, the vital uh, hormones and metabolites that our bodies need. You know that as you get older, your secretions sort of dry up and you stop absorbing food so well. Everybody knows these things. Uh, so when you're in your prime, everything's working very well indeed. Although when, uh, say, teenage children who are coming up to the prime can still have heart disease when they're overtaxing the system. They're taking out more than nature can repair. For instance, that young boy, Tim, who's a pride of his school, 16, 17 years old, and a squash champion, and he died just suddenly of a coronary thrombosis. And this happens when the, the, the rate of, of wear 
is too great for the rate of repair. So overnight you've got eight hours in which to repair the damage and that rate of repair has to be well over double the rate of wear, otherwise you're, building, you're going to die. So you're, so you're saying that somebody that's very physically active, that's putting a lot of demands on their body physically, needs actually, so in your leave, actually needs higher doses of, say, vitamin C and other nutrients to actually support the yes. body in its healing. Absolutely. The more exercise you have, the more nutrients you need. Well, every, every coach and every nutritionist and such a football team should know that. Okay, just back to the, about you actually reg, like, dissolving the plaque in the body. And you actually, you, can, you actually photograph the back of the other person and then they go on to this, like this diet and this supplement regime, so there's mega doses of vitamin C, and you actually can monitor and how the, the heart's actually healing. Are you actually reversing? Hmm. It's dissolving it. But that's just amazing when you think cardiovascular um, disease is actually the number one killer. That's right. 60% of people, 60% of all deaths are due to cardiovascular disease. 50% of, uh, of the, uh, most of those deaths, five-sixths of those deaths, are due to coronary thrombosis and uh, the balance of the 60% is due to stroke and then a few aneurysms and so on. So the, well, why isn't everybody taking more, more doses of vitamin C? What, what well, because happening? the doctors stopped them. You see, uh, uh, back in, in, in 1920s, Dr. Drummond, who, who was a very clever doctor, saw that a great many diseases were associated with scurvy. And at that time, people, uh, scurvy was commonplace, people recognised it, they knew a lot about the symptoms of scurvy, uh, but the doctors uh, started a campaign which is well documented because I'd, I found out, I, I, when I did this research, I found out that I was able to expose the corruption in the medical archive. And the that's, way that, Sydney, the, that's the, really, that's a big thing to say, the corruption, because yes, the whole the yes. Hippocratic Oath is actually there, there to save the person. Four, page 49 of my book has the it. The book! <laughs> page 49, you've got a graph. So, And that graph, that graph, I don't know if, it, if your camera can pick it out, but that graph shows at the bottom there, where the order went out to the editors of medical journals uh, to stop mentioning scurvy and to persuade the, uh, the, the medical researchers to change the terms, to substitute uh, vitamin C deficiency for the term scurvy. So scurvy was removed from the medical archive as far as possible. And so you so see when you, the, now when you mention scurvy, people just scoff at it because actually they just yeah, they use this blanket term. And the average doctor, the average doctor's been misled. There are a lot of honest doctors who don't realise how they've been misled by their own people. Mm. But their own people, is it their own people or is it the doctors who work for the pharmaceutical industry? Um, this is, you're really, you're, you're really skating on a very thin ice when you're talking about the pharmaceutical industry actually using us as basic, like, I guess like you're saying, as, as like, uh, pigs to create money for them. You know. When I was a medical student, I was taught things that didn't add up. I was very friendly with, with, with doctors when I was a medical student. And one of them, Stanley Torrance, a lovely man, he took me aside, he said, Sydney, he put his hand on my shoulder, and when he was sure I was getting the message, he said, Sydney, vitamin C, absolutely incredible what megadoses can do. Well, I didn't know what a megadose was. I'd never heard of a megadose. And I, don't, I wasn't much interested in vitamin C. I'd only heard of that like anybody else uh, that uh, 50 years, 60 years ago. How long? I don't like to think how long ago it was. The, but, but what's the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C that they actually set? So they only like 50 Well, when I went back to university, my, my professor at Newcastle started talking about vitamin C. He didn't tell me about any of the wonderful things. Instead, he told me a load of rubbish, absolutely total rubbish, about how the body reaches tissue saturation, okay. But then he went on to say that if people persist in asking if it's safe to take extra vitamin C, he instructed, he made sure that the medical students, of whom I was one at that time before I changed into optometry, they made absolutely sure that those medical students would go out and tell the world that any excess vitamin C would be, could be converted into a dangerous chemical called oxalic acid, which could cause even more dangerous kidney stones. And it's a total rubbish because it cannot happen. Because vitamin C is water soluble, isn't it? Yes, well, they, 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 the doctors are taught, as I was being taught, that you reach tissue saturation, and any, after that, all the vitamin C that you take is simply excreted in your urine. And then the doctors are taught to make fun of people by saying, oh, you just have the most expensive urine in the street. They're not supposed to think how, how expensive the, the, the urine is when a doctor re drinks vintage champagne that his patient can't afford. So, uh, but the, the, then, so the doctors are taught 
They're taught to mock people, to make fun of them. It's not very nice, really, but that's we are taught to do that. So they, they, you're intimidating the patients, so they don't actually sort of actually take you're like scared. They're taking me mega doses. Terrorist, of terrorist tricks are used to stop people taking vitamin C. But the, do the doctors themselves are misled. Now, I, I looked around me at that time when I was being fed this rubbish, and I thought, how many of my, uh, my colleagues here believe this? I don't believe this at all. That where's the spare metabolic capacity coming from? After you say the tissues reach saturation, there's no more, there's no metabolic capacity left to make this conversion from excess so-called excess vitamin C into this even more dangerous oxalate, which can cause even more dangerous kidney stones. It's total rubbish. So just back to what, like you and reversing heart disease. So say, so a patient, say if I came to you, you would take a photograph of the back of my eye. Yeah. And then you sort of say, okay, then, okay, Valerie, this is your, this is your eye. I go, you look after me, the mega doses of vitamin C and other super nutrients. You might not need any vitamin C. The, the, oh, you, really? There are people 105 years old who are perfectly healthy and happy and have the brains, have the wits, uh, perhaps lived on, on institutional food as well for perhaps 20 years. And they have never taken the vitamin C tablet. Because then that relates so uh, But there are other people, own... there are other, the cemeteries are full of people who have died of non-violent diseases who, who, who are there in the cemetery because they didn't have enough vitamin C. There's a huge, huge range of variation between people. And Dr. Fonero was so kind as to say, uh, it, in the back of my book, he was so kind as to say that cardioracinometry, which I fathered, is the only way of finding out that who needs the extra vitamin C, who doesn't. And this is just by photographing the back of my yes, eye? Yes, it's best time-lapse photographs and comparing them. So this, like when you say time-lapse, how, how often? Well, generally speaking, you want two or three months to be able to see the difference. So this is after they've taken the, the high doses? Yes, I, found a, I had a big problem with my colleagues. When I first put the photographs on the internet, I had a very, very big problem with my colleagues saying there isn't any difference. They wanted to hit you in the eye sort of difference. Well, when people look at um, the... Um, uh, life extension optometry uh, website, daddy daddy da dot life extension uh, life extension optometry dot org. When they look at that website, they can see hit you in the eye huge differences. Mm. We don't see those differences until we're waiting quite a while for them. What we have to be sure about is exactly what the cardiologist Dr. Rath says. They want a s slow, gradual uh, dissolving of, of the uh, plaque, of the obstruction, because we don't want to go for, uh, for binge dieting where it's all going to come back again. That's dangerous. We want to establish a, a system which, which gradually dissolves out the cholesterol so that year by year by year it's going, 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 going. So where does the cholesterol go when it's all dissolved? When the it just simply goes into the liver and is excreted. Oh, okay then. It's excreted through the bowel. So if if you have enough vitamin C. If, enough, yeah. if you don't have enough vitamin C, it's not excreted properly. Ah, oh, so the, the, actually the vitamin C It's all C connected. Helps, vitamin yes. C and uh, cholesterol are in, inextricably connected. So if somebody's actually watching this and they go, okay, I'm going to give what Professor Sidney Bush is talking about a go, how long should they actually give... Um, the, well, Dr. Russell Jaff did ex wonderful research last year and he showed that the, the amount of vitamin C people need can vary from as little as um, practically nothing up to 130 grams a day. 130 grams? 130 grams. That's a lot, and the isn't only it? way to find out is by taking the photographs of the retinal arteries. There's no other way. You can, you can take a, a, a measure, you can measure the amount of vitamin C in people's uh, blood or in, in, in the, uh, the, the mouth or in the water. But that only tells you transiently what it is at that time. It doesn't tell you what it is uh, four hours later. The, the, the amount drops in the bloodstream by half every 30 minutes. Mm. So, they, so what you need is an integrated an integrated view over a period of time, and that's exactly what the photographs give you. So you're looking at the photographs month by month by month. Then you get an integrated view of what's happening, over, not just a, what, a, uh, what a binge did. Because hmm. it's interesting with vitamin C, there's actually no lethal dose of vitamin C. There's no lethal dose. See, the body all. just processes it out. Absolutely, no. The lethal dose of vitamin C is about the same as lethal dose of water. Yeah. So, but just back to the whole thing about like, I just think it's phenomenal that you actually can cure. You're actually saying you're curing and Absolutely reversing cure. heart disease. Absolutely, cure. Two hundred written testimonials from people saying that thank you very much, Dr. Bush, for showing me the reductions of my. This of is the, the number one killer in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely, but it's all for money, isn't it? It's, it's because it's such a wonderful disease to treat. It's such a wonderful disease to dose people with expensive medications, such a wonderful disease to frighten people with, and such a wonderful disease to, to, to show the odd one dying suddenly in the street or whatever. It's, it, it boosts the image of doctors if they can take charge. Well, 
there's a there's an advertisement at the moment on television. Uh, is your father or your relative go, suffer, starting to suffer from dementia? Quick, go consult a doctor. Well, yes, consult him before he gets dementia. It's, like, <laughs> it's just silly, is that they, they have no, and they have no, they pretend to know what causes heart disease. I was denying what actually does cause heart disease. So you found you believe that you found this like this this cure, which is quite a powerful word. Yeah. yeah. This cure. Through you, like you actually questioning what you were taught. With tell, this. tell two hundred bad patients. It's a powerful word. They're very happy with it. They can read. You can read the uh, the, uh, the testimonials on the internet. So why have, has the um, pharmaceutical companies um, done anything to you and the? Yes. The, oh yes. I, I, they've said plenty to me. They tried to get get me struck off the register. Back in nineteen ninety seven, they um, they complained to the General Optical Council. It had no right to tell people that might need extra vitamin C. I've had opposition from them since then. I've had 2,000 websites set up to snowstorm cardiotinology out of sight, 50 every day coming from Russia, bearing uh, uh, Trojans and other and worms and, and so on. We destroyed one of my computers. We had a, a computer destroyed in America. So they're actually, they're actually the computer database, you. our computer What's database in America was destroyed. That's was, it a doctor, was it a doctor's or was it a pharmacy or, or who? We don't know. Pharmacy and doctors work so closely together. Yeah, I think that the pharmacist does the doctor's dirty work for them. Mm, so, but so in this book here, so you've got 700 vitamin C well, secrets. And a thousand, well, not so secret for doctors. It's just a, a sort of te te teasing the doctors. So there's nearly 2,000 interesting things about vitamin C in this book. So a simple vitamin, which is vitamin C, that actually reverses one of the biggest heart killers disease. in this world, yeah. in this country and yeah. in the world. That's right. And also over a thousand different other cures. Oh, there are other thousand things that actually will help. Like also, you there are two thousand interesting things about vitamin C altogether in that book. So even you said malaria. So things like things like nobody should die of an MRSA infection. Nobody should die of Clostridium difficile. There is no such thing as a bacterium or a virus which doesn't is not killed by vitamin C. Well kept secret by the medical profession because there's so much money in it for pharmacy. Uh, I think MMR, the MMR vaccine I think is fraudulent. It's only the girls need a rubella uh, in a uh, vaccine. The boys don't need a root brother vaccine. If they get mumps, or if they get measles, all they need is, is, is vitamin C, and that'll, they'll cure them in 24 hours. That's what Dr. Cathcart found. That's what Dr. Cleller found. All they needed was some vit extra vitamin C to cure them of the measles and the mumps. That's incredible. Well, I'm sure everybody out there is wanted to... If you're not, basically, if you're not on vitamin C, you're crazy. It's the it's most, most important insurance um, policy that you can attach. The people say oh but it's wasted i say to them do you have fire insurance yes so you can sleep at night yes do you want to benefit from your fire insurance no <laughs> it's the same thing you, yeah. you, you take your vitamin c just in case and then eventually have your photographs taken of your retina by an optometrist you'll send them to me and I'll be able to compare those photographs wherever they come from, from anywhere in the world. Oh, they can they, 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 on anywhere the other in the world, world, people can go to an optometrist who has a 45 degree camera. You just need a 45 degree camera. And the, 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 it's absolutely clearly established the relationship between the retinal artery disease and the heart disease, absolutely, completely, clearly, 100% established. So they can get these images from the, their optometrist, like on the other side of the world? Just pay the optometrist to take the photographs and send them to me over the internet. I'm looking, for, looking after people all over the world. Wow. The first optometrist to do so, I'm quite proud of that. Yes. Professor Sidney Bush, thank you very much for coming. So basically, everyone that's Professor Sidney Bush, who actually believes, actually not just believes, knows he can reverse um, coronary heart disease and if you're not on vitamin C get the book and get some vitamin C. Mm -hmm.